welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. So often we take the course of our daily lives for granted. So many of us live in a routine world, knowing pretty much one day what we'll be doing the next. And this isn't bad, mind you. But every now and then, something stops us short. Witnessing a dramatic auto accident. Seeing a building collapse in flames. Well, our story isn't about such disasters, but Doug Watson, our hero, is in for what we might call the shock of his life. Our mystery drama, The Outsider, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars John Beale. is a curious thing. It's so relative. To a child alone in bed at night, moving shadows can be real monsters, very real. Dreams are real until we wake up. What we experience is real to us. And to Doug Watson, his experience was real. It could have been a dream, but Doug doesn't think so. In fact, he knows differently. I sit here with this curious stone in my hand. Unbelieving. Smooth as polished marble. Still warm, blue, and lustrous. I know where I got it. But I still can't understand or, or believe. What happened to me? Was I permitted a glimpse of something no man should know? Did I look into a world of my own hallucination? Hallucination, I, I could accept that. But this stone in my hand is real. It must have happened. And it had to have been this evening. But it seems so long ago. I was on my regular commuter train going home. I had pressing work to do, but... Lloyd Cox had already spotted me. Yeah, playing in the tournament Sunday, Doug? No, I'll be spending the weekend in the den. Semi-annual report to finish. Yeah, you'd better not skip Millie's buffet Sunday night. <laughs> She'll never forgive you. Alice mentioned something about that. Well, we'll see. Well, Sunday's my birthday. Yeah, we know. That's why Millie particularly wants you there. Well, I'm trying to forget the years. I stopped counting three years ago. Yeah, it happens to all of us. Well, my stop's coming up. Uh, take care, Doug. And don't work too hard. See you Sunday night. Yeah, I'll see you, Lloyd. I still had three more stops to go. I opened my attaché case and took out the forecast I'd been working on. I lost myself in a maze of profit expectations, cost factors, personnel demands, and federal regulations. And after a while, something in the back of my mind broke my concentration and I looked up. I got the shock of my life. The entire car was empty. Not another soul in the car. Ordinarily, 20 or so people are still on the train when I get off. How far had I come? I slammed my case shut and ran to the front of the car. Looking through the door into the next car gave me the next shock. It was empty, too. The entire train was empty. There wasn't even a conductor on it. We were coming to the lights of a town. I had no idea where I was. I had to get off and phone Alice to come pick me up. Stupid of me to work right past my stop. I jumped onto the platform. The station house was dark and locked. I couldn't place this town at all. I didn't know much about the villages past my own stop, so I walked toward a lighted diner and went in to phone Alice. That's when I got my third shock of the night. A woman was behind the counter drying dishes, and she turned toward me. Oh, oh, you! Oh, no, I can't believe it. How did you get here? Oh, let me touch you. Let me know you're real. 
You're here. You are real. Look, miss, I, I just want to use the phone. You do have... I've got to call Walter right away. Oh, sit down. And please don't go away. You won't go away, will you? Well, I can't very well go anywhere. I just got off the train. I missed my regular stop in Bloomsdale. Bloomsdale? Mm -hmm. Oh, there used to be a Bloomsdale. Oh, but never mind that now. I've got to call Walter. Well, well then can I call my home? I'll pay you for the call. Only local calls. It, it's because... Walter? Walter? He's here. At last. On the train, he says. Yes, this very minute. Of course, I'm sure. I touched him. It's the outsider. I had to get out of there. Obviously, this girl was deranged in some way. And I had no intention of waiting for Walter, whoever he was. But I did have to phone Alice. Walter will be here in a minute. He only lives half a block up Turtle Street. May I use the phone now? Or a pay phone if you have one. Let me look at you. Oh, let me touch you again. Now, now look, miss. I don't know what bothers you about me, but all I want to do is call my wife and have her pick me up. What town is this, anyway? Hanover Hills. Hanover Hills? In Westchester? Oh, I just can't believe it. You're here at last. You were the first outsider to come here in 30 years. Oh, we've been praying and waiting for you. Yeah, sure. Oh, you don't believe me. You'll believe Walter. He's the mayor. Gail, you're the one we hoped for. You're right. It's him. What is this? Let me shake your hand, sir. I'm Walter Cummings, mayor of Hanover Hills. And you are... Uh... Doug Watson. Doug Watson. Oh, how refreshing to hear a new name. Oh, wait till the town hears this and meets you. And now, tell me. Gail says you came in on the train. Of course. And the train actually stopped? Well, I didn't jump off. A a and this was a few minutes ago? Yes. Oh, this is wonderful. This may be the break. You see, no one in Hanover Hills could hear or see the train. There hasn't been a train go through here in 30 years. You, Doug Watson, are our savior. <laughs> I was now convinced that I'd met up with two genuine lunatics. I started edging for the door, thinking I could either find the police station and some real help, or at least get away. Oh, no, you cannot go, sir. You will accept my hospitality and come home with me for a celebration. Gail, close up and spread the word. Well, thank you very much for your kind invitation, but I, I really have to get home. I have work to do, and it's, it's getting late. My wife's going to be worried. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, by all means, call your wife. Let's see if it works. Gail, this will be the first test of the outsider's power. Uh, here, sir. Call your wife. Thank you. At last. I can dial Bloomsdale, can I? Uh, try it. Keep the fingers crossed. Is it ringing? No. Nothing. Oh. Like a dead lion. Okay, you win. Tell me what this is all about. Am I a prisoner? We're all prisoners here, Mr. Watson. And we believe you've come here to save us. Come home with me now. You can't go anywhere else. Curiously, now I didn't feel menaced. I had a slow, creeping sensation that these people were serious and sincere and that I had stumbled into something totally incredible. It hadn't occurred to me before how old-fashioned the lunch counter and counter stools in this diner were. Not one item smacked of the 1970s or 80s. We'll have a bite of dinner before the others arrive, and I'll tell you why we have such hopes for you and what we expect of you. More coffee? Oh, thanks. Thanks. You see, Doug, for 30 years, not a living soul, not a car, truck, train, or bus has arrived in Hanover Hills. No one has grown a day older. No one's died. Not a single child has been born. I just can't figure you or this whole thing. How can you expect me to believe what you just said? <laughs> we found it hard to believe ourselves when it happened. In fact, we didn't realize that anything had happened. Well, what was it that happened, as you say? 
It was early in 1950. The government was involved in underground nuclear testing, but oh, far, far away over in Nevada. Yes, I remember. But one afternoon in June, we felt a, a terrible rumbling underground. The hills all around us shook. Earthquake? Well, it was just like one. But never in history had there been one here. When it settled, we, we, we saw on the highest of the hills a great fissure, a hole in the side of the hill. And from it came a curious vapor. Underground gas, no doubt. We have no idea what it is. Is? You mean it's still there? You'll see it tomorrow. It's been emerging for 30 years. And you'll see more things tomorrow that I think will surprise you. Things we've grown accustomed to. Well, you say that I'm the first outsider to come here, but why can't you leave? Can't you simply walk down the road a piece? Ah. I hear the word has spread. A gathering outside. Who? In the townspeople. The street's full, Walter. And more coming. Yeah. You'll have to meet them, Doug. I know. I'm the savior. I think they're all getting heated up over nothing. Russ. Oh, this is my husband, Mr. Watson. Russ Harrison. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Russ, be civil. Yeah, follow me, please. They won't hurt you. Hi. You're our hero. I've never been a celebrity before. Ah, uh, please. Uh, please, quiet, everyone. Quiet down. Now, I, I know you've come to see the outsider, and, well, here he is, in the flesh. Real. His name is, is Douglas Watson. His arrival may mean we're returning to the world. Now, I say may because we must not get up false hopes. He's the first outsider, isn't he? It means we're finished with this thing? Well, that's possible. And we all want to believe it. But we'll just have to see what happens. How about a word from you, Mr. Watson? Yes, yes. Speak to them, please. Well, I... I well, I, I don't know what to tell any of you. I don't understand this any more than you do. <laughs> Maybe a lot less. I got off a train, and here I am. Your mayor here, Walter, was explaining something to me earlier. But, uh, I don't know the whole story. Uh... Well, that's about all I can say. All right, friends. E, you can go home now. Mr. Watson and I have some work to do, but as, as soon as we see positive results, you'll all know it. You'll see it and, and feel it. Is there anything Russ and I can do, Walter? No, no. Why don't you run along, too? Uh, Mr. Watson, you'll stay here with me tonight. I, I have plenty of bedrooms. Good night, Walter. Mr. Watson. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. You know, I was going to ask you, why can't you just leave? There are roads in and out of town, aren't there? Yes. Well, hasn't anyone tried to go to the next town? Call people up on the phone? Of course. Then what happened? You'll find out tomorrow, Doug. Tomorrow, when it's daylight, I'll take you around Hanover Hills. But what about my wife? She'll be frantic if I don't even call. Yes, that's unfortunate, but... I'm afraid you can't call her. Our phone makes local calls only. We've never been able to dial a number outside the town. Nor have we ever had a call come in. You saw what happened when you tried to call from the diner. Yeah, well, I'll have to go along with it, I guess. Uh, but be encouraged, as we all are. You'll undoubtedly be back with your wife again as soon as we rejoin the outside world. When will that be? We don't know. As soon as you help us to do so. And just how am I supposed to do that? Well, we assume you know. You came to us through this terrible invisible curtain that surrounds us. We're expecting you to lead us out. seems to have become the unwitting Pied Piper of Hanover Hills, a village caught in a strange and incredible time warp into which he stumbled. 
They're all expecting him to bring them back to the outside world. But I wonder if they really know what they're letting themselves in for. Of course, we haven't seen all of Hanover Hills yet. And we haven't really met its citizens. We'll do both when I return shortly with Act Two. now to return to Hanover Hills, that curious town that claims to have lived in suspended animation for 30 years. I'd say Doug Watson has a tall order in front of him if he expects to unlock the secret of the mysterious force that gripped the town. But the human spirit will rise when challenged and meet the unavoidable obligation. After all, Doug has no choice. Oh, good morning. Does you slept well? <laughs> yeah, much to my surprise, with all this on my mind. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Perfect for showing you Hanover Hills. Well, I'll have to admit I am curious. I just wish you wouldn't expect too much of me. I, I haven't the slightest idea what to do. Yeah, we'll have breakfast at Russ and Gail's diner. Then we'll be on our rounds. Your car's in fantastic shape for a 49. How do you do it? It's never changed. Nothing's ever worn out. Nothing ever does in Hanover Hills. Oh, I polish it regularly, though. Well, what about gas and oil? You said no trucks have ever come in here. Well, where do you get it? <laughs> Pumps are always full. Ed Hanley runs a filling station. Oil and gas are always there. Uh, we gave up questioning it long ago. And electricity and water. Abundant supply. Well, what about food? The fields are always full of fresh vegetables. In summer, of course. The shelves at the supermarket never go empty. Nor the meat freezers. And you want to change all this? It's utopia. Not really, Doug. You'll soon see. Is that the vapor you're talking about up there on the hill? That's it. It's much farther away than it looks. It comes from that black hole on the side of the rock. A deep wisp of steam disappears into the air. Well... Like I started to say last night, can't you just take the main road out of town? Rather than tell you what happens, I'll show you. We're now on Route 52. Runs north and south, supposedly to New York City. Right. I take it into the city myself from Bloomsdale. In fact, if we keep going south, we should come right into Bloomsdale. Uh, look up ahead. Nothing but fields, huh? Yeah, we seem to be leaving the town behind. Oh, we are. Or, or better still, <laughs> exactly as you put it, we seem to be. And we're not? Uh, notice how the road curves up ahead? Yeah. Wait till you see what's around that bend. We rounded the bend, like you said, and there in front of us was the main street of the town we just left. It seemed impossible. We'd driven more than a mile in the opposite direction. The railroad station was on the right, and the diner just ahead of us. Not a single car on the street was more recent than a 1950. Walter pulled up in front of the diner. Like this with every road into or out of the village. We always end up right where we started. Well, shall we have breakfast? Oh, you're still here. Oh, I thought last night was maybe a dream. Oh, he's very much here, all right. Tell us to get some eggs over easy going. All right with you, Doug? Suits me. Two double hands over easy, Russ. Walter and Mr. Watson are here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, you have to excuse my husband, Mr. Watson. He's not exactly Mr. Personality. Oh, it's all right. Yeah, he used to be before this happened. It affected lots of people in different ways. That's putting it mildly. You see, we know it's 1980. But we have no idea what the world is like. All TV and radio stopped with whatever is coming out of that hole in the mountain. How do you know 30 years have passed? Oh, we've kept track of the days, the years. Birthdays are the hardest in most people. They know they're a year older, but don't look at or feel it. And that's hard? 
Listen, I know a hundred people who'd give their left arm to be in that position. Yeah, it sounds great, don't it? You got any idea how boring that is? You got any idea? Oh, of course you don't. Russ, please. Get up every morning and see the same woman looking the same year after year, driving the same car, seeing the same noisy brats, never growing up, just being the same noisy brats that, well, you want to choke them. Only it don't do no good because you can't shut them up. They ain't never going to grow up, and they ain't never going to die. Huh? Let him. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Outsider. Ain't it grand? I was 40 when this thing hit, and if anyone had told me then I was going to live like this forever, I'd have said, whoopee. But I'm so sick of this diner, this town, I could die. But the funny part is, I can't even do that. I'll be out back. Uh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Wall. No, no, I'm glad he sounded off. He's right. I wouldn't have looked at it that way. Yeah, Russ isn't the only one. We would all like very much for time to to resume for us again. To change, to, to grow. And you think I'm the only one who can make that possible? Your coming has given us the ray of hope. Now, after breakfast, I want to show you the fissure and the vapor. It has a very curious property. And I'm anxious to see how it reacts to you and you to it. There it is, up ahead. What is this strange property you mentioned? Now, I want you to see for yourself. Now, we'll have to go on foot from here. We're going up there? Yeah, just wait and see. From this closer perspective, you can see how large that fissure really is. Yeah. The vapor is much more profuse than it appears in the village. Uh, notice that the slope of the hill is a, is a gentle one. Base is about 200 yards away. Nothing at all obstructs our view of the fissure high up there as, as we approach the bottom of the hill. That's right. In uh, just a few seconds, notice what happens. Well? Well? well you don't seem surprised. But what? Don't you see that the fissure and the vapor have completely disappeared from view? Uh, although there's nothing between us and it. We have never been able to approach any closer. They're both still there. I can see them as clear as ever. You... You still see them? Yes. Let's get closer. Quickly. You mean you can't see the vapor? Or the fissure? Not at all. <laughs> We're almost at the very foot of the hill now. now can, can you still? Are you pulling my leg, telling me you can't see that hole up there and the steam coming out of it? I can even hear it. Would I pull your leg about this after everything else that, that you've seen? We have tried since the crack first appeared to investigate it from every angle. We can never come close. The fact that you still see it must mean that you're not affected by it. You can approach it. You can learn its secrets. Well, I'm not going up there for an atomic steam bath or whatever that thing is. Oh, but you must. That's the source of our, our incredible existence. Now, you're the first outsider. You're immune to our condition. You are the only one who can approach and perhaps put an end to it. You're asking me to go into what looks like a live volcano? There's a sort of a pulsating blue light inside there. There is? We've never seen it from the village. Well, this is as far as I go. I'm sorry. You're right, Doug. I must try to understand how you feel. Let's go back to the car. I see it now. We've all been too anxious... You haven't even been here 24 hours, and we're expecting miracles from you. He was right. And I'm no miracle worker. And I was getting more worried about Alice all the time. She must be frantic. She had no idea where I was. And, of course, neither did I. At least, I knew I was alive and well. Walter left me alone for the afternoon while he conferred with the city fathers... For the first time, I had a chance to think. I decided to try leaving the place the way I came in. 
along the railroad tracks. It was worth a chance. I took my attaché case and started back down the tracks in the direction last night's train had come. They stretched as far as I could see. Uh, Mr. Watson, uh, you mind if I join you? Hello? Oh, no, of course not. Well, how for a stroll? Well, I'm going to see how far I can go along the tracks. I should come to Bloomsdale. I've had enough of this nightmare. Well, we won't be run down by any trains, that's for sure. Do you mind if I take your arm? Oh. It's so nice to touch someone different. You are going to lead us out, aren't you? Look, up ahead. Huh? The train station. It's got to be the next town down the line. Do you think so? Look at the sign on the station house. Hanover Hills? It can't be. It is. We've never left the tracks. We've never changed direction. Hanover Hills was behind us. Why are you so surprised? Well, I don't know. I should have expected it. Let's get back. I want to talk with Walter. If you really think I can find something to help you up on that hill, I'm willing to try. We do, Doug. The Fisher is our only answer. And even then, who knows? You may enter that fissure, walk through a tunnel and find yourself back in... Bloomsdale, was it? Yes. Yeah. You may leave us all behind. Well, that won't help you. True. But help is not coming from any other quarter either. Well, I guess you're right. A few precautions do occur to me. I think we should have a knapsack for food and water and some protective clothing. We? Of course, I'll go with you. Well, how can you? Well, even though the fissure is not visible to me, I can still accompany you. Oh, I'm ready. Uh, we'll go tomorrow. Well, why wait? It's mid-afternoon now. I think we should start early in the morning. And we have to get our things together. Tomorrow we'll drive to the foot of the hill and... See what we shall see. In the early evening, just before twilight, I walked alone along the road that led toward the hillside, where the vapor rose silently into the sky. The late sun tinted it with orange and red. It looked like a silk scarf gently waving in the evening summer breeze. And I thought of this morning the hissing sound it made, the pulsating blue lights inside the fissure, and I wondered just what I was getting into. But I had no choice. There was no one but me to approach this phenomenon. And tomorrow, I would do so. Watson seems to have found the fountain of youth, a land where no one grows older, nothing wears out, and nothing changes. But no one seems happy about it. Of course, Doug himself really ought to get back to Alice and the family if he can. What lies inside the fissure in the hillside with the strange vapor and the blue lights? We'll find out when we go along with Doug in Act Three. dawn bright and pleasant in Hanover Hills. A wisp of vapor rises from the hole in the hillside in a straight, unwavering line in the still air. And on the highway leading, you should pardon the expression, out of Hanover Hills, Doug Watson is riding with Mayor Walter Cummings on their way to explore the strange phenomenon that has kept the village a virtual prisoner. Doug, you can't imagine my feelings at this time. We're on the threshold of an answer. You hope? I know that something will change when you explore that fissure. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do when I get there. Uh, you will know. Uh, all we can do is try. Come on. 
I want to get this thing over with. Doug, whatever happens, if you find a way out and, and leave us behind, or, or if tampering with that vapor only increases our condition, I want you to know how much we appreciate your help and your courage. Oh, forget it. Courage is the last thing I've got. I just want to get out of here. Well, this is the vanishing point. Or I'll stop seeing it. But I'll try to stay with you as, as long as I can. Well, let's go with it. It's up there. Big as day. I can still see it and hear it. I can't. Well, what do you see, then? Nothing but the hillside. Exactly as it was before this happened. Now, uh, keep describing it for me. We're starting up the hill now. I'm right behind you. I can see the blue lights now. They're much brighter as we get closer. The opening is larger than it looks from down below. It's weird. It, it doesn't seem threatening. It, it's almost inviting. It's a shame you can't see it, Walter. Hey, is there any heat from the vapor? No. The lights pulsate with a definite rhythm. Well, how close are you? A few yards from the entrance. Looks like a cave. Big enough to stand up in. I'm going in. No turning back now. Walter? Walter? I turned, and Walter was gone. The hill behind me was deserted. And before me, the entrance to this fantastic opening in the hillside. I stepped inside the entrance. And it was like a disco. Hypnotizing, fantastic, fascinating. The walls and ceiling flashed with the pulsating blue and white light. The vapor swirled and danced inside the cave until it swept out the front of the fissure. I felt nothing. No heat, no choking sensation. Nothing but a force urging me deeper into the recess. And then I saw it on the ground, resting in a shallow hole. A small blue stone like polished marble. And from this jewel surged the light and vapor. This was the source of Hanover Hill's predicament. But where had it come from? The earth obviously upheaved it during the quake Walter had described. Hypnotized, I was drawn closer. The force was irresistible. I was completely in its spell. I knelt beside the hole and reached forward slowly. My fingers closed around the cool blue marble. I knelt alone in darkness, stillness. In an instant, the lights and the vapor had stopped. And ahead of me, I could see the daylight at the opening. I hurried outside. The morning seemed just as I'd left it. Bright and beautiful. The hillside and the road below were empty. Walter was nowhere in sight. I started down toward the road and looked back. There wasn't a trace of the fissure I had so recently explored. The hillside was as unscarred as it had been for centuries. I scrambled the rest of the way down to the road. I heard it before I saw it. Coming from the south toward Hanover Hills was a small delivery truck. I waved and shouted, and the driver pulled to a stop. Stop in. How far are you going? Uh, into town. Your lucky day. I got a couple of deliveries there. Yeah? Baked goods, I see. You uh, know this Hanover Hills pretty good? A little. Why? Never been there before. You know where the diner is? That's my first stop. Yes, I don't think I can show you where it is. But right now, I'm not too sure. Town ain't all that big, is it? Uh, no, it's not. So where are you coming from? I'm up the line. Baker's in Mount Vernon, but I deliver all over the county. You sure you got a delivery in Hanover Hills? What's the matter with you? Would I be asking if I didn't? Right there in the dash. See them slips? Top one says Hanover Hills, diner, handy food store, and landmark hotel. How come you never delivered there before? Never had an order that I know of. 
I've only been working for the bakery a couple of months. Hey, we're coming into town. Which way do I go? Straight ahead. I'll tell you where to turn. It's right across from the railroad station. Holy Moses. You sure there's anyone living in this place? He had a point. The place was the most run-down looking town I'd ever seen. The nice row of houses that only yesterday were so clean and neat were in complete disrepair. Paint peelings, vines all over. The street was cracked and broken. The gas station was deserted. The roof sagged and the glass on those old-fashioned pumps were broken. We parked in front of the diner and I held my breath as we got out of the truck. First-rate bakery. Anybody here? Hello? Anybody here? Yes. And I I'll take it. Oh, thanks, ma'am. Uh, just sign here. Say, how do I get to the handy food store? Uh, just two blocks down the main street. You can't miss it. It's half gray and half fresh painted white. Oh, okay. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, see you again on the next order. Uh, so long, buddy. Good luck. Doug! Why, I didn't see you standing there. You came back. We were wondering. Gail? What's happened? You... You've aged so. What happened to the village? Well, we caught up with 30 years. You did it, Doug. You did it. Ah, Doug, you're back safe. I saw you get off of the truck. Walter, you're all taking so offhand. Don't you know what's happened to you? Well, of course. It's just what we hoped for. And wait till you see this town a year from now. Old Martin Briggs has a run on paint and lumber and nails like he'd never had before. We've got a town to fix up. Thanks to you, Doug. Thanks to you, we got a reason to get up in the morning. Oh, and we were so hoping we'd see you again, too. We thought perhaps you'd gone home through. We owe you a lot, Doug. I'm glad you got back. I've still got your briefcase for you. I kept it safe. But, uh, but it was only this morning, wasn't it? Less than an hour ago. Doug, we've been dying to know. What did you find up there? Only then did I realize that I still held the smooth blue stone in my hand. I opened my fingers, and it lay in my palm, cool and lustrous. I, I picked this up uh, inside the cave... And everything stopped. And for us, everything moved forward. Uh, how long are you staying, Doug? I can put you up again tonight. Well, I want to get home as fast as I can. Well, trains are running now. You can get the southbound 607 into the city. It stops at Bloomsdale. And that's what I'll do. Oh, brother, will I ever. Yeah, here she comes, Doug. And remember, we're just up the line. Come see us again. Oh. Please do. Dinner's always on the house. Yeah, we've been through something together. There's a bond between us now, Doug. You and Hanover Hills. I, I know I told you yesterday, I, I think it was yesterday, how much I liked you all. And I'll still be saying it ten years from now. So long, friends. So long. Doug. Thank heaven you're home. I was so worried. What happened to you? I missed my stop and ended up Where, in... Where, for heaven's sake? Hanover Hills. Where? I never heard of it. Why didn't you call? I'm sorry. I, I didn't seem to be able oh, here, to... Here, let me take your coat. Oh, dinner's a little dried up, but I can freshen it. That's okay, honey. Darling, you look tired. You have been working too hard. Oh, what's this? It fell out of your pocket. It can't be. Sort of blue stone. Oh, it's beautiful. What is it, Doug? Alice, this is still Thursday night, isn't it? Of course. But what is this? Oh, it's so smooth and cool. Doug, where did you get it? I sit here with this curious stone in my hand. Unbelieving. I know where I got it, but I... I don't understand. And Alice most certainly never would. What happened to me? Did I look into a world of my own hallucination? 
No. This stone in my hand is real. I'll keep it. Always. And when my spirit wearies, I'll remember. I'll remember. And I'll love life more. Time is a curious phenomenon. We hate to see it pass, but we're quick to waste it. We often want to kill it, but we rarely work it to death. And we often wish that time would stand still. Well, we just saw what happened if time could stand still. I don't think I'd enjoy that any more than the good people of Hanover Hills. I look forward to each new experience, each new day, each moment, in fact, like the one we'll share when I return shortly. something new and exciting into your life? Variety is the spice of life, and change is inevitable. When things get you down, and everything seems boring and monotonous, just remember, it won't always be that way. There's another day, a bright day on the way, even if you happen to live in a place called Hanover Hills. Our cast included John Beale, Joan Shea, Ray Owens, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.